Just fantasy baseball. We're back. Clay and I were just chatting about coffee before the start of this episode. And I just said, Clay, we're starting this episode and we're just chatting about coffee. Because I was talking, I've been buying just like, you know, the Starbucks or like this brand called Stock. I don't know how to pronounce it. S-T-O-K. Yeah, I know that one, yeah. S-T-O-K. And I've just been buying that because coffee is so expensive when you go to like whatever coffee shop you go to. Somehow I walk out of there and I spend $5 on a nice coffee and it just doesn't add up. So Clay has his Keurig behind him, which I thought so, is kind of a flex. I uh, I have a espresso maker. I like that. That That's my fancy side. And I have the French press, all that stuff. But I also have the Keurig deal. As you can see, those on YouTube right over here, which is in my office, Pro Move. Don't put it in your kitchen. Put it where you work so you don't have to go back and forth. Um, and so- I actually buy my pods at Costco, which a lot of people probably like, that's gross, but the whatever the gross. Costco Kirkland brand yellow, that's delicious. 33 cents a pod, you get 120 of them. Now, if we were doing fantasy drafts of grocery stores and places to buy food, Costco might be my first overall pick. Like I love, I love Costco it. more than I love just about anything. I that agree. place rocks. I am a family of two and we shop at Costco and it still works, but I absolutely we'll, love this conversation. We should probably talk fantasy baseball. Let's talk baseball before everyone jumps off. Okay. So today we're just going to run through a bunch of names, like random names. Some guys that are coming back that have come back from injury. We wanted to talk about some guys that are just like popping out of nowhere and going off. Like dare I say, Jesus Sanchez. And then I also want to talk about some struggling guys. I know clay has a few names, um, but but, Clay, we must talk about the most exciting player in Major League Baseball right now, Ellie De La Cruz. And I don't even want to mention him because you're the Reds fan. I want you to take it away. Give me your reaction to his first game ever. Just like not even from a fantasy baseball perspective. Like what yeah. was your reaction seeing him in a Reds uniform for the first time? My like fandom, like how I act as a fan for the Reds has changed. Now that I write about them more often, you kind of look at it more analytically like I don't often like fanboy as much as I used to. I'm pretty level-headed. Man, I was, I really touched my inner fan fandom the other day when he got called up. And um, I made my wife watch it with me just because I was like, I just want you to see this guy. Like, this isn't a baseball player. This is something different. And even she was like, she said, holy shit, he's really tall. Like, that that was her initial reaction. Um, But yeah, watching him, his first, in his debut was awesome. And you can see the energy around the Reds walk off win, came back from down four. watching him last night, Wednesday night, when he hit that home run, I, I like sent a picture to my wife of where the ball was caught, like the perspective of the person who caught the ball. And she, and she's not a baseball person. Like she literally could not like fathom the idea that the ball could, cause you can see home plate and she like couldn't, figure that out. And then I was explaining like he ran the fastest home to third in the MLB. Yeah. And she was just like, I don't get this guy. Like the average person can't like just say Ellie De La Cruz and understand like this person is potentially the most skilled baseball player in the next decade, right? Like he could be up there with the other names that you come that come to mind. I think he is currently the most tooled up baseball player in in the league and like Shohei Otani might still own that I I don't know if I'm ready to take that away from Shohei but yeah I mean Ellie very well might be like fastest sprint speed he has hit a home run at 115 miles an hour that went 458 feet and then he's also hit a ball 112 a ball 109 like every single ball that comes off of this guy's bat is going to be a million miles an hour um it's yeah it's it's unbelievably exciting and like that's all I can say. It's just so exciting. Just I, I want a quick answer here because I want your initial reaction. What would you if you caught the ball? What would you ask for in exchange for the ball? <laughs> oh man, um, I wouldn't ask for too much. I would probably just ask to like meet him. Like, yeah. hey, can I just get like a few minutes, get a picture, like chat with him? I think that's that's even yeah, cooler so... than an autograph or a bat. I would actually, you know, I'd probably ask for a bat too or something. But like, it was cool I wouldn't ask kid. for the world. The kid who got caught it looked to be, you know, college age, and he was with, you know, a group of eight buddies. 
and everyone's like debating like he's eating any money like what's he and he was holding out holding out holding out like not giving it to the reds and then at the end of the game like he just hooked all of his boys up like there's, there's a picture of like all eight of them with ellie he has a bat all of his buddies have a signed ball by ellie in a case already like it was so cool he's like hook me and my boys up that's all i want so shout out to the king you know what the the ama- like what makes Ellie so exciting is the hustle element to him. Like I don't know if you saw that video in the minor leagues this past week, but he basically had the little league inside the park home run, yeah. but it, like only because he takes that extra step always. And I think that's what's also so exciting about him. Um but yeah, he's like from a fantasy lens, Ellie De La Cruz is is in that Julio Rodriguez, Corbin Carroll like it, group of players where next year he might be legitimately like a top 20 pick. I think he will. We did see last night's game. The one thing that I'm concerned about in his swing is I think it was Gratterall threw him a breaking ball loan away and he swung through it. And that is the whole, like, I don't mind him because the double he hit for his first hit was four inches above the strike zone. And he drove at one twelve. Like I'm not too concerned about. Yeah, all those are on fastballs. Just... He'll probably get eaten up by breaking balls a little bit here, yeah. early, but he'll still Slow do away. enough damage on on fastballs to to do enough. I think. Yeah. All right, Clay. Should we talk about some other guys? Absolutely. Okay, I want to talk about Tristan McKenzie to start here because uh, he made his his return to the mound the other day and he shoved five innings pitch, ten Ks. Now. It was the Twins, and they're rocking a 33% K rate over the last 14 days, which is the highest in Major League Baseball by a wide margin. It's actually really rare that you see an entire team carrying a strikeout rate over 30%, but still, the velo was sharp. He averaged 93 fa- 93 miles an hour on the fastball, up to 95 miles an hour. Um, but the thing with McKenzie that, that has always impressed me is his ability to command, and his command looked there as well. Um, he had a 2.96 ERA last year, a 3.48 XERA. Like for me, if you've held out this long, hold, hold, hold on McKenzie. Um, he looks great. I- I'm very excited to see where he goes from here. This is a guy who's going to give up some hard contact, um, and quite a few fly balls, but, but like you said, the strikeout stuff there is awesome. And you know, he, he's, it seems like he's been around for so long. Because he's had so many like moments in his career, like struggling, getting sent down, getting called up, getting injured, coming back, pitching well, pitching poorly. Like he's just had a lot go on. And I think he's uber talented. And he's the type of pitcher that can give you the, you know, six and two thirds of 11 strikeout, four hit ball. And he's the type of guy that can struggle at times. I'm not saying he's all or nothing, but the home runs, a little bit worrisome with his profile. But I think he's trending in the right direction throughout his career. Yeah, I think that's fair, man. Like, he is going to give up hard contact, but he's going to get enough strikeouts and, you know, weak fly balls to be fine. Like, 2.96 ERA in 190 innings as a 24-year-old is really damn impressive. And to do this in your first start, like, I'm very excited to see where he goes from here. Because, like, he's just entering his prime. I would not be surprised if he starts adding you know, some things to his repertoire. Um, I would like to see him throw that curveball more because that curveball is filthy. Absolutely filthy. Um, all right. I want to talk about Andres Munoz as well because he returned um, this past week. He struck out two and pick up picked up a hold in his first appearance back for the Mariners. Um, Munoz was my... He was probably my second favorite, maybe third favorite reliever draft pick this year after um, Yohan Duran and Alexis Diaz. And Munoz is nasty, man. He struck out 13 per nine last year, had a 2.49 ERA and a 1.84 XERA. Like, absolutely filthy stuff. Um, But now he returns to the Mariners. Paul uh, Seawald has been amazing in that closer role for Seattle, so I don't think he's losing that anytime soon. Um but I think Munoz is kind of entrenched in that hold hold role. And I wouldn't be surprised if the if the Mariners get hot here that he could start picking up a few saves. So I think he's an ad as like in deeper leagues. If you're in well, if you're in a league that has holds, definitely roster him. But if you're in a like a 12 man league and you're just kind of like praying for some saves, 
yeah. he's going to get have good splits, and I think he'll have an opportunity to, to lock down some saves. Even the 10-man leagues, I'm adding him to a watch list right now. And if anything happens with Seawald injury-wise or anything, um, he's also the type of player you can pick up and use for if Seawald's gone you know, three out of four days or something and you like the matchup, you can pick him up just for that day, which is actually going to bring me to the next player I want to talk about. I did exactly what I just said with Craig Kimbrell. And I know that name is one that probably shakes some people to an extent. Um, he had a good matchup this week with the Tigers. And I was looking, you know, I'm trying to just find somebody for one day. I picked him up. He got the save with three strikeouts. And I thought, wow, that, and I watched, I was like, wow, Kimber looked good. So I went back since giving up four runs on May 3rd, he has allowed two total runs in 11 outings. That's 22 strikeouts in 11 innings and only three total hits. Now, two walks. Two, two walks. walks in 11 innings. That is the thing right there. Oh, my God. These numbers and are pretty crazy. Now, like I said, you know, he's – a lot of people are going to see that 5 ERA and just kind of stay away from him. He does have some tough matchups coming up. Dodgers, D-backs, Oakland, Braves, Mets, Cubs, and Nats. But what I'm saying is that's good. If you know what's going on right now, that's okay because he may not be picked up for the Dodgers and D-backs, but – if you can pick him up for that A series, if you can pick him up for the Cubs and Nat series near the end of the month, like he's somebody you can kind of bounce on and off your roster. He's had several outings when he strikes out the side recently, and he's looking much, much better. Batters are hitting 200 on the fastball, 154 on the curveball. Dude, he has a 5.09 ERA here, but a 3.1 XERA and the end yeah. play, as you mentioned, like. He's been nasty since that that one bad outing against the Dodgers. He has 19 strikeouts in 11 innings, just two walks. That's nasty. That's like his peak Kimbrel stuff. He has nine stuff. saves on the year. But keep in mind, the Phillies' closer situation is not great. It's a bunch of different guys that they've been trying out. Like The way he's pitching right now, and we know Craig Kimbrell can be elite at times. Like, What if he just happens to have one more of those elite years in him, and this is it. And he finally stabilizes the Phillies' closer situation. Like, I I have him on my roster. Like I said, I picked him up from one day, and I kind of thought I might hold him for a little bit just to see what happens. I say why not? He just picked up his 400th save as well, so congrats to Craig for that because for as much as he struggled the last, like, you know, two, three, four years, he was the best closer for the 2010s and and it was it was always a little scary to watch him on the Red Sox but like what closer <laughs> isn't a little scary like even Kenley Jansen scares the crap out of me so yeah um Clay I want to talk about Jesus Sanchez and we haven't talked I don't even know if we've talked about Jesus Sanchez on this show we I haven't I was so in on Jesus Sanchez going into last year like I was he was my prediction to hit 30 home runs I was saying outlandish stuff about Jesus Sanchez last year, but he's kind of doing it now. He's hitting 306 on the year with six home runs in 38 games. And if you look at the Woba leaderboards, minimum 100 plate appearances, right? So he only has 110 plate appearances. But if you comb that leaderboard down to a minimum of 100 plate appearances, he's seventh in Woba. Amongst the names of Jordan Alvarez, Aaron Judge, Will Smith, like... All the best hitters in baseball are there. And then there's Jesus Sanchez. He's also 16th in ex-Woba. So it's not lucky. He's doing legitimate things here. And the biggest changes for him this year have been more line drives. His line drive right now is, is, is 33%, which is well above league average. Um, the other change that I noticed, he's swinging more inside the strike zone. His swing percentage on pitches inside the strike zone increased from 66% last year to 76% this year. That is a huge increase, right? The goal, your goal as a hitter is to swing at good pitches, and he's doing that more. He's making less contact on those pitches in the zone, but it makes up for it. The fact that he's he's swinging more at those pitches is making up for it, and his strikeout rate right now, 27% looks really sustainable. This is a guy that has always been able to walk. Um, so I think, 
you should absolutely run and pick up Jesus Sanchez in any league right now. Like, uh, he, yeah, he is somebody who, you know, I've kind of seen it and thought, oh, we're going to get the old Jesus Sanchez. And, man, he's looking so much better. Um, the barrel rate, 11.6%. But what I like, Colby, pull up his spray chart. I noticed this today. Last season, he had, I believe, two balls that I would consider dead center all the way to left field. So oppo field for him that went for a home run last year, all of last year. He's already at four this year. All of his doubles, he's also hitting to left field. Like he's, and it's not just like he's focusing on hitting oppo. I'm saying, I'm sure, I'm saying that he can show oppo power more than he ever has in his career to this point. And to me, that's a great sign. If you showed me this spray chart and said, guess the handedness of this batter, I would absolutely say righty. Yeah. All Almost of his doubles are to, to left field. This all year. of his doubles four two of his home runs are down the line. Three of his home runs are to dead center and one is pulled. I mean, that's really encouraging stuff. I agree. Clay um, hitting line drives, but the other reason I want to talk about Jesus Sanchez is I just picked him up on so rare. Um, He's a deal right now on Silver. I got him for $7.57, his limited card, because I'm trying to build my limited team. I deposited like $100 in there, and I'm just trying to like penny pinch my way to a, a like a really, really good team. Um, so I have some other pickups. I, I picked up Jesus Sanchez for $7.57. I think I mentioned I picked up Kiebert Ruiz last, last episode for $4. Um, I've also added Christian Walker. He was a little bit expensive, $17, but he's... He's a guy that's been going off the last month and a player that I that's your guy love. too. Um, and then I also picked up Logan Gilbert because if you go look at Logan Gilbert right now, I believe he I has an him. ERA close to four. Um, yeah, three point eight ERA, but a two point nine eight x ERA, a three point oh eight FIP. He's not walking anybody. He's striking out um, a, a career high twenty eight percent of batters, and he's added that that splitter. So I'm expecting a big second half from from Logan Gilbert. So I picked him up for eleven dollars, and I thought that was a really good deal. So continuing to like make little purchases here and there to build my limited team. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't already, go join our league on Sober. You can play along with us. This is a free to play fantasy sports game where you you collect you know NFT cards, um, draft your team, join our league. It, it's a ton of fun. And now I'm like I've been playing for two months now. Um, and now I'm starting to get comfortable enough where I'm starting to buy cards and like build out my actual roster, which is a ton of fun as well. Colby, the next three and last three that we have on our list are all players that I don't have the best things in the world to say about. I'm going to start with Jorge Soler. And this is actually not as big. I want to start with him because I'm not going to say too much negative. I just think it's a good sell high opportunity on Soler. Um, we all know that he has crazy pop and he has done nothing but hit home runs this year. The past two weeks, he's batting 200. And even with this amount of home run power that he's flashed, we know that 283 ISO is going to come down. That would be second in his career only to 2019 when he hit 49 home runs with that juice ball. I'm, I like Solaire. I don't want to make it sound like I think he's a bad player. But if you, like me, have been burned time after time on players you forgot to sell high on, or re- I, I'll admit, I refuse to sell high on too many players this year. I think Solaire's a good sell high opportunity. Like, I think his batting average will not help you. The strikeouts are, you know, here or there, but man, I, I, I just don't see him hitting the same pace going forward. And I think some people will think like, this is the Solaire they paid for and want to trade a good asset for him. Well, I, that's my only thing. I don't know if anybody really will trade an elite asset for him. I also don't like, this is Jorge Solaire. He is that Chris Carter type of yeah. player where he'll go on two week stretches where he hits five home runs. And then he'll go on two week stretches where he doesn't, hit very well he's striking out a little bit more than usual but he's a very streaky hitter um which is kind of what i like in a fantasy player sometimes because like you get the highest highs yeah. um 
So I don't know. I, I think he's still doing a lot right this year, striking out at a like a career low rate. And dare I say the ball is juice this year? Is that a crazy thing to say? I don't know. I want to do some more research into it. After but to, watching to Detroit me, Tigers like baseball, I would say no. Juice, man. The next player I want to talk about is Tim Anderson. I am concerned about Tim Anderson. And I freaking love this guy. Like, he is one of my favorite players in the league. His personality is swag. I love it. I wish he would get back to what he used to be. 267, 306, 313 on the year. That's a 74 WRC plus zero home runs and 176 at-bats. Now, I know his value is not hitting the ball out of the ballpark. It's being fast enough to get to beat out grounders, to, you know, steal bases. That sprint speed's in the 42nd percentile this year after being above 80 his entire career. This guy has dealt with injury after injury after injury. And I'm not saying like, oh man, 29-year-old freak athlete Tim Anderson is on the decline. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is in a redraft league, like if I can find someone who wants to, because I know there'll be people that say 267, this is a 300 hitter. I want to buy him. I don't. I don't like the mojo around the White Sox. He there, there's potential he could get traded. I kind of think he won't. But I potential. would say though, I don't think you have an option to sell. I think you have to hold. If you're a Tim Anderson owner, you have to hold. Like he does have a 291 expected batting average, and his slug is lower than his X slug. And I think that's like really dull analysis on my part. But I think you do have to hold. But Clay, to your point, man, like. This is this is a player that has always been a ground ball hitter, but he's yeah. taking ground ball hitting to the extreme this year. He has a 63% ground ball rate this year. A 15% fly ball rate would be well below his career low. Um, and so you just can't be a good hitter at a 63% ground ball rate. Like, you, you just can't. Yeah, Especially when the elite speed has not been there this season. Now, maybe he's still coming back from injury, and, you know, it's just... I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say, like, Tim Anderson's now slow, but I'm just looking at the stat that, you know, and I don't know if sprint speed stats, the best thing in the world. I'm sure there's flaws with it, but it, I mean, he is on pace, half, which is He's still on pace for like the same amount of steals he had last year. So like, I don't know how much the sprint speed really is affecting his, his stolen base numbers this year. Luckily, luckily bigger. they, they made the bigger bases and, yeah. and they made it easier to steal for him. Um, but, I, but yeah, it's going to be harder for him hold. to get on first base. Yeah. I think you got to hold, though. I don't think I'm you... selling. What are you selling for, though? Like, I... <laughs> who's I, taking Tim Anderson? I know that there's people out there that will still buy you. I would sell to you right now because you're saying hold for the same reasons. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, give, you, uh, I'll give you Jorge Soler. You want him? That's actually kind of a fun trade, isn't it? <laughs> it's an interesting trade. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like, if you're really fed up with Tim Anderson and you have another second baseman or shortstop, it's not the worst thing to do. But I just also a guy who gets injured quite a bit over the past couple seasons. Like, I don't know. Let, let's move on and talk about. Um, I want to give you a pat on the back, not because we're Xander haters here. But because preseason, you had talked about, you know what, just tell us what, what you said about Xander preseason and you warned everybody about. Yeah, I mean, Xander coming into this season, whether it was from a fantasy perspective, whether it was from a free agent perspective, was my, like, I was way out on him coming into this year because he's entering age 30 season. This is Xander Bogart's last year had his lowest power numbers of his career, which was concerning to me, especially because Fenway, was the third highest park factor stadium. It's a very good hitter's ballpark. Now Xander Bogarts moves to San Diego, which is the second lowest park factor stadium. And so many people were saying, well, now he doesn't hit it, have to hit it over the green monster and everything. I'm like, that's going to hurt him. That's going to hurt him a lot because he can't do what Justin Turner's doing right now and just like turn on balls, hit it a million miles in the air and, and just like skate over the green monster. And so yeah, I was I was really concerned about Xander Bogarts coming into this year. And so what has he done? Well, his first 91 plate appearances, Clay, he had a 350 average, five home runs, a 10% K rate. And it was like, wow, he's off to a great start to his new 11-year contract with the Padres. But below the surface of that, 
there was a very concerning 27% hard hit rate. And that's what I saw. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh, there are dark times coming. And dark times have come. Over the last 152 plate appearances, he has a 194 average, just two home runs, just nine RBIs. He does have five stolen bases, but a 37% hard hit rate, a 50% ground ball rate. And so last year with the Red Sox, I'm obviously a Red Sox fan, so I watched so much Sander Bogarts. And the amount of weak chopping ground balls that he would hit through the hole, I said to myself, there's no way that is sustainable in the long run. There's absolutely no way. And now the latest with Xander Bogarts is that he's dealing with a wrist injury, which for a hitter that has to utilize quick hands in his swing is very concerning because that's what's going to dull all of that power. It's going to dull those line drives. Like that's why he's hitting the ball on the ground so much. And so I don't know where you go from here if you're a Xander Bogart's owner. Like I'm I'm very concerned. 194 average with two home runs and nine RBIs in the last 152 plate appearances. Like that's droppable levels of of play. Like if you're in an eight team league, I would consider dropping Xander Bogart's right now. Yeah. I mean or trade him for Tim Anderson, man. <laughs> I would take Tim Anderson over Bogart's right now in a second. In a, it's been in rough, a... and now he's injured, minor injury, but you know, banged up. And man, I don't think that's minor though. A wrist injury. Yeah, yeah. It's lingers. day to day is how they list it, is why. But that's something that like you can play through, but it's going right. to linger with you the entire yep. season. And I think Bogart's was also hurt last year. Like this isn't something new for him, and especially he's not a spring chicken anymore. I'm, I I don't want to get into this, but I just want to put it out there for everyone to think about. Like, just go look up the Padres contracts for the next 10 years, seven years, whatever it is, and see Jay Cronenworth on there and um, see just how much money they have tied up. This team is, is it, the window is not as large as it seemed like it would be two years ago. What was that Jay Cronenworth contract? Dude. Who pays a utility man like that? Not even utility. They're putting that first base, which now. is worse, way worse. Oh, great! Yeah. Our ninety-three WRC plus first baseman that we're paying fifteen million dollars a year, seven years, to Jay Cronenworth. He's sneaky old too, but let let's not get into all that because um, Javi Reyes of Locked On Padres is going to be helping us with the Juice Fantasy Baseball Show, kind of behind the scenes. So um, I I don't want him to cry. No, I want him to cry so badly, (laughs) so badly. But let's talk about DJ LeMahieu. Another disappointment. I totally forgot about him. I did too. And and the beginning of the season, I was like, wow, DJ LeMahieu is hitting the ball really hard. He has a forty seven percent hard hit rate right now, Clay, which is the highest of his career, um, or at least tied for the highest of his career. He's had other seasons where he's had forty seven percent hard hit rate, but. His strikeout rate this year is 27%. That doubles his average of 13% strikeout rate from 2017 to last year. 27% this year. So that's a huge problem. Like, you can point to that for why he's hitting 240. And the reason for it, though, is below the curtain, his out-of-zone contact percentage has dropped 20% year over year. Last year, it was 70%. On swings out of the zone, he was making contact twenty uh, 70%. This year, 50%. So he's swinging through a lot of pitches out of the zone this year, which is leading to a lot of strikeouts. I'm I'm very concerned about DJ beyond. like He's hitting the ball hard, but 27% strikeout rate from this guy is just no bueno. I've just never been like a huge fan of his to begin with. Um, I mean, he, he's a good player. I just don't think he's like amazing or anything like that. Um, I think that 2020 season when he hit 364 and 2020 season screwed everybody up like mentally, right? Like we don't know what to think about these small sample sizes. He had a 177 WRC plus, but man, he just like has been like a good player for the past five years, but I don't think he's great. You know, really good year 2019. We talked about the juice balls too, like 26 home runs. Okay. He's never hit more than 15 in another year. Not a big fan. I'm out on him. Yeah, he hits a crap ton of ground balls, so that it makes sense. Um, last guy I want to talk about, Clay, is Matt Chapman, 
who has been struggling mightily since yeah. May 1st. He has a 195 batting average with just three home runs and nine RBIs. But this is the one guy that I wanted to bring up that I'm not concerned about. And I think you should be buying. Like, I think this is the perfect guy to swoop in and catch an owner who's been frustrated for the last month watching Matt Chapman and his 195 average with no power. But over that span since May 1st, a 55% hard hit rate, a 9% barrel rate, everything is in line with what he was doing in April. And, but his home run per fly ball rate in that, in from May till now, 7.7%. This is a guy that should be able to sustain a home run per fly ball rate over 20%. What's his ground ball rate in that amount of time? Um, I don't know if you have it. I kind of put you on the spot there. Sorry about that. It's okay. I can I can look it up here. I don't think – I think everything looked the same, though. It's 36 on the year, which is around his – Yeah, like his average, average launch angle over that span was 15.8 uh, degrees, which is right around where, where he's been for forever. He's pulling um, the ball the least amount of his career. Ground ball rate, yeah, 38%. Fly ball rate, 44%. Right in line with like career norms for him. Um, so I think Matt Chapman is such a good buy low right now because he's still hitting the crap out of the ball, but just getting pretty unlucky. Like his BABIP over that span, I believe, was like 240. So I mean, that's a buy. Contract year. I always say, man, that's contract a buy year. I'm willing to buy. Like nothing has changed from when he was going off in April till now. But there is an owner out there frustrated that he's been oh, yeah. watching Matt Chapman hit 195. So, yeah, that's that. That's that's all I got. Um, you got anything else, Clay? Anything? Anything last? You gotta get. You gotta set your lineup on so rare for Friday. So the competition to. for this weekend starts tomorrow. So Friday through Sunday. Um, and anybody listening, please go set your lineup. Join the Just Baseball League. Link is in the bio or the description of the episode. Um. Show what? us your shirt, Colby, because I think people can buy them. Oh, yeah. The Juice Baseball long sleeve. Those things fit great. Athletic material, whatever that's called, dry fit. I need another uh, one because I wear this shirt like every every time I wash it. It's like the first shirt that I put on. It's so comfortable. But anyways, yep, just fancy baseball. Go buy some merch. Join So Rare. That's the plug. We'll see you next time. Adios.